Hi, I'm Lauren Bregitzer, the audio professor and an Ableton certified trainer based on the University of Colorado Denver. And I'm going to give you an in-depth overview of the new hybrid reverb in Ableton Live 11. The hybrid reverb is an effects device that allows you to add two different reverbs, a convolution and an algorithmic reverb to create many different reverb sounds. These two reverb functions can be combined in serial or in parallel. In addition to those two modes, you can also use just the convolution or just the algorithmic reverb. The complex sounds you can create with a hybrid reverb can be natural, lush, experimental, and everything in between. All right, so when you first drop the hybrid reverb on a track, the default sounds pretty great. You can find the, the uh, reverb, the hybrid reverb, under the reverb and resonance category, because these are categories now in Ableton Live 11. And I can just drag that onto this piano track. Um, first, we'll hear a little bit of it without the reverb on there. And here's with the reverb on there. So you'll see here that it's broken up into two sections. Over here we have the convolution reverb section, and to the right we have the algorithmic reverb section. In the middle, you have the ability to see which uh, configuration you have that. Uh, as it say, stands, it's serial, so the output of the convolution goes into the algorithmic reverb. So it has just the early reflections as its default, and then the algorithm, the dark hall, so it creates kind of a nice hall sound. So that's basically the, re the default of this reverb. So on the left side, uh, there's a send knob. So you can see the send knob on here. And this basically just attenuates the amount of signal that's being sent to the reverbs. It will not affect the amount of dry signal in the output. So if I have a dry wet knob down here, um, where it's, you know, 69% dry, nice, uh, I can bring that uh, send down and it's not gonna affect the amount of dry signal. It's just gonna affect the 31% of the wet signal. So there's not gonna be any uh, weird gain changes. So you can use that send for that. So below that, you'll see a standard pre-delay. So right here we have, you know, just time-based pre-delay. And one of the interesting things about it is that you can set it to be rhythmic. So you can set it to, you know, a 16th note. Um, all It basically does it in 16th note increments all the way up to a, a whole note there with a, a 16th of 16 16 So if I bring it down, you know, to make it, you know, an eighth note. Um, make it longer, you know, make it a whole uh, half note. So I kind of create some interesting delay sounds with that. So you can play with that and do some great sound design options. All right, so let's just focus in on this convolution section over here. Now, here we have serial. Um, we can do it in parallel, and we can do the algorithm or just the, just the algorithm or just the convolution. So I want just the convolution side. I can do one of two things. I can just adjust this blend and turn it to 100% on the convolution side, and you'll see the algorithmic side grays out. Um, anything above that, then it turns it back on. Or I can just switch it to just convolution. And if I want to use just the convolution, aspect of this. I can go in here and there's categories on here. So I can find a nice uh, hall and you know, there's different categories of halls I can choose from. Um, I can do you know, a large, large wood, a warm hall. Which sounds pretty nice. Um, so a bunch of ones to choose from. Plates, classic plate. has a nice sheen to it, but it's not super long. You can see the length of these impulse responses in the upper right-hand corner of the convolution. Now, the nice thing about the convolution reverb is that you can drag and drop your own impulse responses onto there. So what I've done is I have a third-party impulse response from a Procrasti reverb, and I can just take that and drop that on there. And now I have you know the Procrasti reverb impulse response in here. That sounds really nice. All right, so moving along to just the algorithmic side, I can do that just by switching to algorithm. And we have different algorithms to choose from. We have dark hall, quartz, shimmer, tides, and prism. Dark hall is just basically your, your sort of standard reverb on there. And you have quartz, which is the next one. Uh, Quartz has some audible taps in the late section as they describe it, and you can turn the diffusion all the way down and create some nice echoes on there. All 
which is pretty cool. So it gives you a lot of great sound design options. Double click that, go back to its preset uh, default. And so the next one we have is Shimmer. Now Shimmer is one of my favorite algorithms on there because it sounds just gorgeous on a piano. So just with this default setting, it has a pitch shifter, which has a 12 half step. So basically an octave above there. So it has a sheen above that by one octave. So let's check that out. That sounds great. Now, when you combine that to say like a nice hall, so if I take this back to uh, the uh, from algorithm, I switch it to um, parallel. So I have that shimmer being blended with that uh, impulse response I dragged in there of a, of a preset for the Bricasti. You know, you have a nice sounding reverb. If I want more shimmer, I can bring that, bring that up. Sounds nice, maybe a little less, a little less decay on there. So that sounds absolutely great. So now I'm gonna go back to the algorithm and let's check out a couple of others. Um, we have tides and tides is interesting because it has modulated output. So, um, so if I increase this and I increase the tide, you can hear some stereo modulation going on on the output. So you can do some interesting sound design options with that. Um, and Prism, Prism's pretty great. Um, if I switch that, that sounds, uh, it's a very neutral sounding reverb. Uh, so it has a very pristine quality to it, but it's 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 uh, artificial. So it doesn't sound like it's in a space. So similar to like what you use a plate for, um, you can use this Prism algorithm. <laughs> So that's really nice. You can just dial down the wetness and just ha use that as almost like a ghost reverb on there. Now I talked briefly about the algorithms and by default, the default setup has a serial, but my personal favorite is parallel because I actually get to blend the two together. So that's my personal preference in a lot of uh, combinations of these different reverbs with the convolution and the algorithmic. So in addition to these main settings that we see in a lot of different reverbs, uh, the unique blend of this, we also have the ability to do some interesting sound design options. There's some functions on here that do some crazy stuff, like we have this feedback function, and you can hear that in action here, and which basically feeds the output of the reverb back into the input of it. Second kind of So that can be used for some interesting sound design options and you can play with that. Uh, another thing that we have is this vintage slider. Now what this vintage slider does, and I bring it up, it has different settings, uh, extreme, older, old, subtle, off. Uh, what this does is it adds a varying amount of aliasing and quantization error to, to create the uh, sort of grittiness that you have in some of the vintage digital reverbs that came about in the 70s. Um, so you can kind of dial that up and it's, you know, it's interesting and fun to play with. You can really hear the aliasing in that one. Kind of fun to modulate that one in real time. Um, I'm going to have to play with that one later on. Um, so moving forward, we have an EQ setting here. So this EQ allows you to tailor the, the, the sound of the reverb without having to add your own EQ. So it starts off with a high pass filter on there. Um, you know, if you want to thin it out, you can bring it down some low mids or, you know, if you want to darken it, you can kind of switch that on. Now that's, that's a shelving filter. You can switch that to a low pass filter if you want, and you can even adjust the slope of that. So it's just a, a subtle darkening of the sound. So that's pretty that's a really nice addition to this reverb here. Um, now, another thing that you can do is uh, set it so that you can see pre-algo. So this will put it before the algorithmic reverb or after, depending on what you want to do. So depending on how you have these blended, you can do that. 
Now, a couple other functions that we have here. Uh, we have stereo, so you can adjust the stereo width, which is really nice. You know, a lot of times you could do that with the utility device, and you now you have that built right in. So if I wanted a wider reverb or a narrower reverb, depending on what I'm trying to do. That's super wide. We can narrow it quite a bit. And lastly, we have this bass mono button. Now, the nice thing about the bass mono button is it takes everything from 180 hertz and below and monos it, similar to what you could do with the utility device. Um, that's nice because it tightens up the low frequencies of everything. So it's just really a nice addition on there. Just know that it does it at right at 180 hertz. Um, which is plenty. So this reverb gives you a lot of great sound design options. Um, a couple other things that you can do is you can freeze the reverb. Uh, so if I, if I go back to my just my algorithmic reverb, um, switch to blend all the way to the right, and I can hit this freeze button and freeze the reverb. And unfreeze it. I'm going to bring that pre down a little bit. And another thing you do, is, and when you're freezing, you actually bring the input back into it with this arrow button. So these are things you can automate and do some sound design things with. And with that on, I can bring the input back into it. So all that's pretty fun. Um, I'll say probably my favorite algorithm on here is the quartz. You can do a lot of different stuff with that um, with its default. I just sort of really like the sound of that. That or the prism are my two favorites on there. And there's a lot of great convolutions that you can choose from. So play with that. So that wraps up my detailed overview of Ableton Live's new hybrid reverb device. This is one of my favorite devices in Ableton Live. It's an amazing reverb with plenty of options, but it also allows you to get experimental with combining the different algorithms with the convolution reverb.